Hey, everybody, and welcome to today. Because <laughs> it's not tomorrow, baby. Hello, everyone, and today we're going to be talking all about crate training. Crate training has been a hot topic, and it always, I think, will be because people have a lot of questions about crate training. Why should they crate train and what they're struggling with when it comes to crate training. Now, some of the most common things that we hear people are struggling with is uh, potty accidents or peeing in their crate, um, crying, you know, not acting happy, crying, throwing a big fit in their crate or peeing in their crate or crying in their crate. You can see there's a theme here, as well as there's a very small percentage of People that struggle with their puppies escaping their crates. The Houdini dogs. Houdini dogs, yeah. And <laughs> um, we want to share with you why crate training is important, how you can work through what you're struggling with, and some tips and tricks that we have tried over the years with all of our puppies that have worked really well. But before we get into that, if you don't subscribe to our channel, please do. We really appreciate it. We love sharing all of our great information with you. Um, so hit the subscribe. And turn on notifications. Why not? Right. So let's get started. Um, so we talked about why crate training is important in a sense of it's going to help with potty training your puppy, as well as it's going to keep your puppy and your stuff safe. Um, whether you're traveling, your puppy should be crated in the car or just around the house. If you're not able to watch your puppy and supervise what's going on, they should be crated. We've heard all kinds of horror stories, things about Tables chewed, couches destroyed, shoes destroyed, beds chewed up, or dug holes in the middle of down comforters, pillows, all the things. And then puppies end up with bowel obstructions because they ate stuff that they shouldn't have, and it's not coming out. So, And, and for the, the ladies, most of the time, it's the, the frustration of their things being, and then the guys, I've heard that it's just the frustration of having to go shopping with the, their wives again, you know? So um, it goes both ways here, guys. So... When we talk about crate training, um, people say, well, I really struggle with crate training because my puppy just cries and cries and cries in their crate. Or they say, well, I work from home, so it's just easier for me to have my puppy out with me all the time. Yep. But those things um, are potentially going to set your puppy up for failure because there's going to be a time where your puppy needs to be crated and then they've never been crated. They've never had that expectation. And it's going to be a ton harder for them. As, and stressful. Uh, I mean, yeah, harder on them, stressful for them. They're going to get labeled as having separation anxiety because these puppies that, you know, came home at eight weeks old over the next five, six months really haven't had to be crated. And now they are for some reason or another going to the vet, being boarded, um, having to travel, um, be flown. And the crate is going to be not as comfortable of a place for them because it's never been something they've had to do before. So a couple things, because people, the number one thing is the crying. You know, people say my puppy just goes in their crate and all they do is cry and cry and cry. And then I let them out. <laughs> Red X. So that is your biggest mistake that you're making. Um, your puppy is then becoming conditioned to, if I go in my crate and I don't like this, I cry. Mom and dad come and get me out. Yay, I'm happy. So next time mom and dad are thinking, well, we really need them to get used to this crate. So we're just, we're going to leave them in there. Well, then they cry and they cry longer and they cry louder because last time it worked. And eventually you go, oh my gosh, I can't listen to this anymore. This has been going on for 20 minutes. This is too long. And then you go get your puppy out again. And then they go, see, it worked. And the same cycle is repeated and repeated and repeated. And you're going to really struggle um, after you keep giving into them, this reinforcement-based training that is happening and they're not going to be able to settle down and quiet down. Now, if you can hold out and listen to the crying, it may seem like that first time is forever, especially for a puppy that may have never been crate trained, crate trained before uh, at the breeders before they go home. And keep in mind, your puppy, it's their first time away from their litter mate. So this is all new, but it's part of developing a well-socialized, well-rounded part of the family. The key here is what's happening is reinforcement-based training. Kat mentioned that, and we've talked about that a lot in our other episodes. Reinforcement-based training is extremely powerful, especially when it's the dog's idea. So they bark and bark and bark. They get let out. They're reinforced for that behavior. Now, the same thing, and, and it's going to get exponentially worse. <clears throat> the same thing happens in the better 
side of things too. If the you, good behaviors. The good behaviors. They cry it out. They're quiet. Then you let them out. It's going to get exponentially better and it's not going to take very many times. The first time, Kat said, it's going to take a little while, but then it will get shorter and shorter or longer and longer depending on which direction you're going. Yeah. If you're reinforcing the good behaviors of them quieting down, hopefully that time period will get much shorter that they settle down. Much if faster. you're reinforcing the naughty behaviors of them crying and crying and crying, they're going to cry for longer and louder. Um, and we can't give you an exact, well, is my puppy going to cry for 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes? It is just so dependent on your puppy's personality, puppies with a stronger will, a more determined personality. You know, they're going to try longer. Uh, the puppies that are a little more easygoing and a little bit easier to settle down, they're going to say, oh, well, this isn't working. I'm just going to lay here. So um, it's going to vary from puppy to puppy. So now some of you that are struggling, we have a couple go-tos, things that uh, this is not a, you know, more or less step-by-step -step guide to fixing this. This is kind of a bag of tricks, which is what we yeah. talk about. It's, um, it's not a perfect equation. You might have to add something from this list or take something away from this list, but find out what works for your puppy. Or it could be a combination of things from this list that really works well for your particular puppy and situation. So we've now talked about the importance as well as the struggles that you may be having with crate training. And we're going to move right into our tried and true pro tips and tricks on how to get through this. Now, this is not a specific uh, recipe or equation. You're going to want to add some things, not use other things, or combine a few of these things into making the most uh, successful situation for you and your puppy. So the first thing that we want to talk about is actually the appropriate size and type of crate. So you're going to be more successful with potty training your puppy if the crate is just big enough for them to stand up, turn around, and lay down in. Not enough room that they can go potty at one end and play and lay down at the other end. So getting the right sized crate for your puppy now is important. Don't just think, well, my puppy's going to be 60 pounds full grown, so I'll get the big size now. Um, Which is a pretty common thought. You know, it's efficient, right? We'll save some money, we'll buy one, and it'll be the one that they get to use forever. Right. And it would actually be better to maybe buy a little less expensive crate for their first 16 weeks approximately, and then get a bigger, more, uh, I guess, robust crate that's going to last them the rest of their life. We actually really like uh, Lucky Duck crates but they don't have the smaller size yet. So getting a cheap Walmart clamshell type crate, but not those wire crates. I don't like the wire crates for a couple of reasons. A, they're usually the ones the puppies can escape from the easiest. Yes. B, they're not nice and enclosed. So the puppies can either pull things in if they're up next to curtains or beds or anything like that. Um, as well as if your puppy does have an accident, not that that's ever going to happen, right? But if your puppy does have an accident, it gets everywhere. They're like splishing and splashing and dancing around in it and it's everywhere. So it makes a huge mess. Whereas if it's in those like plastic clamshell crates, it's a little more contained. Absolutely. Now that we have the right size crate or appropriate size crate for your puppy, we're going to talk about chews and treats. Now these are extra special things that you're going to try and save just for when the dogs are crating. Um, this is going to help make going into their crate a special thing, not just eh, we have to go in there and sit by ourselves. So um, some of the things that we specifically have found work really well for our dogs are pork chomps and nutri chomps, as well as some antler chew bones. All of these things that we have found that work well for our dogs are on our website and we have sizes for puppies. We have sizes for middle to big dogs. And then um, we have a couple different sizes of those antler chews for, again, both the small dogs and the large dogs. Because it's important to actually have the right size treat and chew for the right size dog. If you get these teeny little treats for your big dog, it's like crunch, crunch, gone. Yep. That's over and done within 30 seconds. Or you get these really big bones for your little puppy thinking, oh, it'll last forever. They'll love it. They can chew on it for months. Well, your puppy's going to get bored with that because they're never going to make any progress on it. And they're going to say, well, this isn't actually that fun. So the right size treat for your puppy will make a big difference too on how well they enjoy that treat in their crate. Seems to be kind of like a sweet spot of 30 minutes to an hour. Um, and you have to work up to that. A little puppy is not going to chew on something for an hour. But when you get to an adult dog, a 45 minute to an hour long chew would not be out of the question if 
they are continuously working, um, you know, making ground on that chew itself. So we also want to talk about background noise. So most people's puppies have never been away from their litter mates before when they're getting them at eight weeks old. And so having that complete alone time and quiet from their litter mates um, can be a little bit stressful. So Absolutely. if you have background noise, which could be a radio, a TV, a fan, you could get a noise machine, something like that. That'll just help with a couple of things. One, it will cover up any other ambient noises that are going on in the house. So if you're in the other room doing something and your puppy can hear it, they might think that they're missing out on something. Puppies have huge FOMO. They don't want to miss out on the activity. So if they hear that going on, uh, they may complain a little bit that they want to be part of that. So that background noise will cover that up as well as if you're not in the house and they are in their crate by themselves where you're at work or running errands, then they don't feel like this completely quiet house aloneness. And there's that extra noise to make them feel more comfortable. Yeah. It's kind of a, it's a more lonely feeling to be completely quiet like that. Yes. So now that we've talked about the white nose, we're going to go into one that has, is pretty self-explanatory. It's a very basic concept, but it's a very good tool to use. And that is a towel. You just cover the crate with a towel. Now, this is going to not only provide more of an enclosed den-like feeling, which dogs are naturally den creatures, uh, things like cozy caves and stuff like that. Dogs absolutely love to be inside, wrapped up, nice and warm, um, and in their cave, basically. The, the towel can turn a crate more into that, as well as it's a little darker, so it can give you more of a relaxed even. Time for a puppy nap. Dozing. Um, dozing off. And ultimately, it's going to help your puppy to be more relaxed, more comfortable in their crate. And they're not going to be able to see out of their crate things that they might be missing out on again. See this theme of FOMO. Puppies have FOMO. So a lot of these things of come back to helping them get over that fear of missing out. So we talked about the towels. Now, something that we want to talk about that kind of goes hand in hand, and both of these things are important, is both physical stimulation or exercise and mental stimulation and exercise. You can't have a well-rounded puppy without both. And both are necessary for your puppy to feel exhausted, both physically and mentally, so that they can go into their crate and settle down. And a tired puppy is a happy puppy. But I think the one that gets overlooked the most is the mental stimulation aspect of things. People think dogs need exercise. Let's go play fetch until they tip over or let's let them run in front of the four-wheeler or the truck or the whatever. Don't recommend that, especially with pickup trucks. Scares crap out of me. But people do those things all the time where it's just exercise, exercise, exercise. Trying to physically wear out their dog. And it works for the first few times. But then because they're athletes, they get stronger and build endurance. And then all of a sudden that two or three mile run doesn't do anything. And they need to go for six or eight or 10 or. It's called conditioning people. People do it to themselves. Marathon runners, they work up to that point where they can run a marathon. And it's not as hard as running two miles for me, you so, know? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the physical side of things is important. But let's talk about what's as if not more important, which is going to be mental stimulation. Which are things like continued socialization is going to help that puppy have to think through those things, as well as structured training time. Puppies that have to learn new tasks and then expand on those tasks of, well, first we taught you how to get on a dog bed. Now we're going to work on staying on that dog bed for longer and longer. So all of those things that tax the puppy's brains is going to help wear them out mentally and both the mental and physical side of things are really important for a puppy to be able to settle down, not be full of energy, ready to romp and run um, when they go into their crate. So they'll be able to settle down easier. And it's important to remember structured versus unstructured, you know, just tossing your puppy out into the backyard to burn off some steam and run off those puppy zoomies isn't the best option either because it can definitely teach some naughty habits as well as be difficult for the potty training side of things because you never know when the last time was they went potty because you haven't been out there with them watching them. Absolutely. Now, every puppy that we have raised, we found has benefited from having a routine. Now, there's a very specific difference here between a routine and a schedule. Some of you may think schedule and routine go hand in hand. I get up at five o'clock when my alarm clock goes off or whatever the time is. 
and then the puppy goes out and then the puppy eats at this specific time and so on and so forth. But the schedule itself, um, dogs are really good at anticipating things and they're really good at learning those specific schedules and expecting them. Now, routines, on the other hand, are going to be things like as soon as we come out of our crate, we go out to go potty or before we go back in our crate, we go out to go potty and monitoring how much food and water intake and keeping those in a set area so that you aren't or area of time so that you aren't, um, you know, the puppy isn't drinking water all day long and you never know when the last time they really had anything to drink was. All of these things are going to be beneficial from a routine standpoint, which is going to make it a lot easier to help with crate training and potty training both. Yes, because otherwise life gets in the way and you're not home at the exact same time as you were before because something happened at work, you had a fire to put out, whatever, and your puppy's sitting in their crate going, it's 5 p.m., I need to pee because that's what time I do every single day. So helping your puppy learn that there's expectations of I get opportunities to go to the bathroom when I come out of my crate and then before I go back in my crate, as well as they have the expectation that I don't just spend all my time in the crate. There is definitely time throughout the day for training sessions, time throughout the day that I'm out of my crate for playtime. Um, and that's going to help your puppy just become well-rounded as well. Well, there's science behind it. Um, Pavla, I believe, is uh, they ring the, de- the bell, then feed the, the fish or feed the animals. And the salivation starts as second that bell rings. So, you know, that type of very specific timeline can cause issues in the, in the long run of your puppy learning to be part of part of life and, and part of everything going on. So, yeah. So then the last thing that we want to talk about is a vice versa type of thing. So either your pup, these are things that are completely, I, I just got to point out, these are the things that are completely overlooked as being options, right? So we talk about each dog as an individual. You may use some of these things. You may not use other of these things. You don't need to put yourself in a situation always where you're just beating your head against the wall. If it's not working for you, let's try something else. And and these two things are going to be great examples of that. So we have being with you or being away from you while they're created. And every puppy's personality is different. You have some puppies that have really strong fear of missing out and they want to be part of the activity all the time. And if they're not, they're not happy. And those puppies that have a more determined personality and persistent personality are going to cry it out a little bit longer in their crate. So if they can be removed from the activity so they can go in a back room, you got your background noise, you got your chew bone, you got your towel, and they can't see and hear what they're missing out on and they've got their own thing to be occupied with, they're probably going to settle down and be happier in that back bedroom away from the activity. Then you've got the puppies that are the ones that want to be with you. Yes. And with that specific puppy, it's going to be better and faster and easier for them to settle down if that crate's near you. Eventually, that crate will be able to move further and further away from you to a more common location. But to begin with, you have the crate with you where the puppy can feel comfortable and know that you're there and that they're part of things. They're not alone. They're not alone. Um, The other side of it is uh, if they need to go to the bathroom, you can hear that they need to go to the bathroom and you can help to be more successful with that. And right now we have two puppies. If you've been following along, you know, we have Thunder and we have our little Zeph butt and Zephyr is the puppy that does better being near us. He's in a crate. Not right now. No, but, but we just shot Yawa the other day and he was sitting right next to the table the entire time, quiet as can be, happy as a clam to be there with us. And the thing with him is he's I mean, he's fairly independent, but at the same time enjoys being with us. And it's, it's one of those things that he's also very quiet. He's a very quiet puppy. There's not much barking that goes on. So sometimes his little, his little cues that he's trying to tell us that he does need out to go to the bathroom are missed if he's too far away from us. Yep. And then we have Thunder, who is more or less the opposite of that. He does better, um, you know, in the crate, in the back room with the white noise and the other things. Cause if he's out with us, he sees what's going on. He wants to be part of that. And he will then bark a little bit more and be a little bit noisier. Whereas if he's back there, not aware of what he's missing out on, he settles down and is really quiet. 
So we have the opposite extremes with these two puppies, which because they're so close in age, only a little over six weeks apart, we really get to see that black and white difference. But like we've talked about with these tips and tricks, it's not an exact equation. You have to find out what works for each puppy, what works for you in your guys' situation. And it's more of a bag of tricks that you can pull this out and try this. If it's not working, try another thing. If that's not working, try those things together and see which trip tricks and tips are going to work for you and your puppy. We hope that these help you in your crate training adventures. Guys, I'm the guy with the pink gun. And I'm Cat the dog trainer. And And we will see you in the next video. We always say that almost in sync together, like we've done one or two of these videos together or something. One or two. (laughs) 